So right now, we will dig a little bit deeper uh, related to drawdown because the drawdown yeah, is something, the biggest problem for all traders. And uh, because of that, I just want to a little deeper to go there. So a drawdown are inevitable part of the training. How do you personally define a drawdown uh, when you have some alarm for, for LED, red light when you see the drawdown? Do you have some drawdown rules or anything that you can, you can explain exactly. right now? So it all goes back to your testing, right? So in my testing, my maps are around, I think off the top of my head, I don't have it pulled up. I think it was seven or eight. So I know if I go over that number, maybe I'm doing something wrong and I reassess. But if I'm in between seven and eight losses, understand, okay, this happened in July last year. It happened sometimes. And it's just me understanding that this is part of the process and you have to understand that. But for drawdown, what you really have to do is you need to be prepared before you go into these prep firms. So understand your max drawdown, your max daily drawdown that you take in multiple trades in a day. So you have a parameter to know if I go over okay. that, maybe I might be making a mistake. But even sometimes it's happened to me. I've gone over by two trades, but every single trade has been part of my rules. And it just turns out that when you're live testing, you get new data and stuff can happen. That's, that's really it. Excellent. And we have one problem when we talk with traders. We have, we have a, two schools when we talk about drawdown. One of so, them so. will say this. I'm risking 1%. If I have a drawdown, I'm risking 1%. If I have more drawdown, I'm risking 1%. This is it. And other mm -hmm. traders, when they see drawdown, they reduce the risk size and uh, try to decrease that risk size. So yeah. can you tell me which school are you? So, so it honestly depends. Like if I'm trading my own account, I'm not going to change my risk. But let's say there's a percentage of times small percentage that I do kind of close to like to let's say I'm down nine percent, right? I would adjust okay. my risk to save the account. So let's say I'm down nine and a half percent. I can't risk one percent anymore. Okay. I'll slowly make my way up to break even by risking a smaller percentage. And then when I'm back at break even, I risk that one percent again. But I wouldn't do anything for that. Like I wouldn't just go risk three percent because I'm down three percent. You have to just keep a consistent rule. And this is why prop firms kind of get a bit sketchy because it, it's tailored to make yes. you break your rules and stuff like that. So you really just have to be on top of it. And sometimes reaching accounts happens, but it happens a lot. And sometimes it's based on your emotions, but sometimes it's you can't control it, right? It's just your trading strategy had drawdown and you lost to the house or the about prop firms, because that's how they get you. They want you to lose. Yes, uh, but uh, when we talk about prop companies, what is your strategy related to drill down when you trade for yeah. prop companies? Yeah, okay. So the strategy would be to always risk 0.5% if I'm in drawdown. And then if I do get to a point where I would say I'm 9.5% drawdown, okay. and, I risk, and, I, and I lose that next trade, I would drop the risk down by half. So I always put it in half if I'm getting really, really close to drawdown, which has only happened once. So I really don't have a set like strategy that's happened over over time. The one time it happened, I went from 25 to 25. And I was lucky enough or not lucky enough, but I was profitable enough to get back to break even. And then I just risk 1% again. So the strategy is just keep your same risk until you can't risk that anymore, which it should be 0.5. And then you can drop the risk into half and then slowly work your way back up to break even until you're at that square one again. 